Hey y'all, in today's video, we are going to get organized. Let's go. First of all, welcome or welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Kayla. I'm a homeschool mom to three girls and we are about to enter our sixth year of homeschooling. Today's video is all about getting organized and it is a collaboration video being hosted by another awesome homeschool mama here on YouTube, Shauna with Making Everyday Magic. So make sure that you check out her channel and also make sure that you check out the collab playlist in the description box below for more fun organization videos. First thing that I'm going to do is get our crayons organized. I got this great little organizer off of Timu. It was like $5 and it is, in my opinion, the perfect dimensions to organize crayons specifically. My kids have been reaching for and using crayons a lot more frequently lately, so I wanted them to be out and easily accessible on their desks rather than tucked away in a supply box on a shelf, which is where they were before. I went ahead and sorted all of our crayons by color, warm colors, cool colors, and neutral skin tone colors. What's left in this box is I have our oil pastel crayons and I'm also putting all of our tiny little erasers that we don't really use for erasers. We typically use them for math counting manipulatives or just like fidget toys. I'm also just storing some of our surplus markers and twistable crayons and chalk. So these are really just our back stock extras that I can keep tucked away and we can always pull them out if we need them. This large white bin is one of the many bins that I have some of our bulk craft supplies in and this one has just become quite the mess. A lot of what's in here is actually trash. It definitely needs a good clean out. I have a second one of these clear pencil cases from Ikea and I'm going to be using that to store some of the smaller craft pieces that we have like pom-poms and googly eyes. I also decided just to put our air dry clay in the larger section there and then I was wondering what to do with these white stickers so I decided to go ahead and move the pom-poms over to the two smaller compartments. And then I cut these white stickers into strips so that they would fit more easily in this long rectangular compartment. My daughter uses these white stickers for all sorts of things. She has a better imagination than I do. She definitely wouldn't let me throw them out. I'll wrap up this box with our clay carving tools and a tiny bag of little craft sprinkles. Found a few extra markers, so I'll tuck those in there. Okay, back to the white bin. I'm going to try to fit some of our larger bulk back stock for crafts in here, like our glue, these pipe cleaners, some tissue paper, and construction paper scraps. And now on to sorting some new construction paper. Whoever thought of packaging construction paper with the colors all mixed up, you are not my favorite person, but we are going to set this straight and get all of this paper sorted by color. My husband giggled when he saw me and my daughter sorting paper stacks by color. And maybe you will giggle with him and think that this is a little bit silly to do, but it makes my heart so happy to have everything sorted by color. Now it's time to clean out my paper sorter. As you can see, it will all be on display, which is why it pays to have it sorted by color. Okay. 
that looks so much better. Now it's time to set up some binders and I'm gonna show you my new teacher binder. So this is something new that I got for myself this year. This is my teacher's binder. I really wanted a place where I could keep all of my moving parts and pieces in one place. This is a three inch binder case. I will link this one below because I just got it on Amazon, but I have seen similar ones at like Target or Walmart. I know right now is the season to buy school supplies, so definitely check prices, shop around. I really liked the clear plastic as opposed to a lot of some of the loud color schemes that I was coming across as I was looking for these. So what's special about this is you have your three ring binder on the side, but then you also have all of this additional storage over here. You have basically your own little mini file folder system over here. Five color coded folders. These little label holders have slots on either side. In fact, it actually came with labels. I'm just now remembering. I have not used them yet, but they're here. Nice little zipper pouch, mesh zipper pouch, and then a little extra pocket here. And this is held together with some Velcro that's quite secure. So this is just a great little dumping zone for me and I can keep things somewhat organized. Um, I can plan ahead. I can have you know, worksheets and units that are gonna be more short-term use. Maybe we're only using it for a day or a week or six weeks. I can put those things kind of up here and get them printed, prepped, organized. So I really like that. They do have versions of these case binders where you have an exterior access point to your file system. I could definitely see how that could be beneficial. I just didn't opt to go with any of those. I'm okay with keeping it open and just accessing that as needed. Over here, I have really crammed, I mean, the three inches was like barely enough room to fit all of my teacher's guides and some additional resources that I want to be able to reference throughout the year. So the first thing I have here is my 33 week schedule for our grammar program that we're gonna be using. I am planning on using the actual teacher's guide digitally. I didn't wanna to have to print it, it's way too many pages. And a lot of them are supplemental pages that I might not need. But I did wanna have a printed copy of the schedule, which is really handy. It has a table for each of my weeks and lets me know exactly what pages we're gonna be pulling from our activity book, or if there's any pages that I need from the actual teacher's guide printed, it has that too. So that is definitely something I wanted in paper form. The next thing that I have is my printed PDF version of the Writing Revolution. This is the free version that you can download online. I highly recommend getting this or rather downloading it and if you want to print it, great. If you want to just read it on a device, that's fine too. But this particular version of the Writing Revolution is so much more user-friendly than the newer version that's currently in print that you can buy on Amazon or wherever books are sold. This particular version has a lot of written examples of students writing. It also has these goal checklists um, for sentences. And then I believe there's also checklists for paragraphs. Yes, there's checklists for paragraphs also in the back. So these are great reference points just to see what skills your kiddo has mastered when they were introduced with those skills, all of that sort of thing. I wanna be able to reference this frequently, so that is why I stuck it in my teacher's binder. Behind this tab, I have my teacher's guide for our Spanish curriculum. So I will definitely be using that every single week. And I have a few important pages already tabbed and marked. And then behind that, this is some more um, material for our Spanish curriculum for the phonics portion of it. And then behind that, I have my instructor's guide for our science. 
So this is exactly how the instructor's guide comes from Bookshark. It is already pre-punched for a three ring binder. And the instructor's guide actually includes your schedule, your answer key, but it also includes your activity sheets. These are meant to come out and be used by your kiddos. So I have actually already started the process of pulling these out and putting them into my daughter's binder instead. I'm using this science program with two girls. So I bought a second set of activity sheets that were packaged separately. Those already went in one of my daughter's binders. I need to pull the second set of activity sheets that are spread out throughout this instructor's guide and put them in my other daughter's binder. So that's actually what I'm gonna finish working on right now. <coughs> and then I will show you guys how their student binders are looking. So I've already done the first 11 weeks and each week looks the same. You have a sheet for schedule, you have your answer key sheet or sheets, and then you have your activity sheets. So I am just gonna be pulling the activity sheets out from each week, putting those in my daughter's binder, and then skipping ahead for the next week to the next activity sheets. There's some heavy weight on your shoulders. Okay, so that is done, and that is going to make my teacher's binder a little bit lighter, which is perfect. Definitely took a large percentage of paper out of my teacher's binder. So the great thing about this binder is things can come and go. We use a lot of short-term unit resources in our homeschool, like we might have a novel study that we're only using for four weeks, or I might have some worksheets printed to supplement, you know, what we're learning in history, but we're only going to use it for that one week or that one month. This is what that's for. So I have my teacher's guides and resources and schedules that just make more sense in a binder or in my science bookshark case already came punched for a binder rather than have those separately spiral bound. And then I have plenty of storage for any extra supplements, unit study resources, whatever. And that way I can easily move things around, take things out, add things. I'm loving the teacher binder concept. Very excited about that for the school year. Let me show you a tour of what my girls' student binders look like. They are identical. So even though I have a first grader and a fourth grader, these particular binders are identical because they are for the same exact resources. So up front, I am only putting six weeks worth of our science activity sheets. And you can see we already started, we actually just started this today. So this is only weeks one through six. We school for six weeks at a time, six weeks of lessons and instruction before we take a week off. So that is what this is. Only six weeks worth of worksheets. And then behind this tab are the rest of our science worksheets for the whole rest of the school year. So this is currently weeks seven through 36, all of our activity sheets. So as we finish our first six weeks, our first term, during our week off, I will prep this for the next six weeks. So these will get pulled out once they're completed. I'll pull the next six weeks out of here, a little chunk move those to the front. So this will be getting smaller and smaller and smaller and more and more condensed. It's pretty stuffed now, so we definitely need to get through some of these pages. My plan is when they finish these worksheets, they will have a few options. If they decide, I really love this activity sheet, I'm so proud of my work, I love the picture, I wanna hold on to it, they'll have a couple of options. One, we can trim off this excess border and paste these into our school nest graded notebooks. Two, 
we can just leave these as is and tuck them away into our file folder for the year. Each of my girls has a file system where they have a folder for the entire grade level and they can keep whatever they feel is super important, valuable, special, sentimental. I have a feeling that a lot of these worksheets will not be kept and I am totally fine with that too. So that's the plan for all of the science activity sheets. Behind the next tab is their grammar workbook. And this is kind of the same thing. A lot of these are like cut and paste activities. I know these pages are gonna end up getting pulled out. Some of it we're gonna keep, whether they wanna paste them in the notebook or just keep them loose in their file will be up to them. But I also know that a lot of it, once we've used it and done it, it's probably gonna end up in the recycling and that's totally fine. But that is what this is. So we have not started Beowulf's grammar yet. My plan is to add in things little by little until we're at our full schedule. So I'm thinking this will probably get added in by the end of August, early September. And so whenever we're ready to start that, I will just pull out six weeks of lessons um, or six weeks of activity sheets, whatever we need for those six weeks and put those in this section between these dividers. So when my kiddo comes to open their work, hopefully that will keep them from getting super overwhelmed. They're just seeing what we're going to be learning about in the very near future. And then everything else is stored behind another tab. So those are the student binders. And again, this is a one inch binder and it's barely enough room, but that's okay because we'll be taking things out as we go. So this is my first graders. This is my fourth graders. They are identical, six weeks of science. And then I'm gonna put six weeks of grammar here. And then all of the extra pages are in the back. I am really hopeful that we enjoy using these this year. So these are our homeschool shelves where we store pretty much all of our books and supplies. For the most part, it is pretty organized. I'm not going to change a lot or move things around a lot. We kind of already have everything where it's supposed to go and we do a pretty good job of maintaining it. These are the two plastic pencil cases from Ikea that I have some of our smaller craft supplies and our back stock, extra markers, things like that, that you saw earlier. Basically, this whole bottom section of the cube shelf unit is art supplies, craft supplies, and handicraft supplies. I do have like some puzzles over there, so that doesn't really qualify by the category but I just keep those within reach of my youngest so she can get those and play with them. But we have like our paper, art books, um, sketchbooks, notebooks, coloring books, all of that sort of stuff, paint brushes, some small parts craft supplies and extra craft supplies. This top case is my daughter's jewelry supply kit. Over here we have our kinetic sand sensory bins. There's two of those. And then like I said, some puzzles um, that are more geared for my toddler. Down here I have all of these white bins. These are also from Ikea. I really like these bins because the lids of them have a little lip and we actually use these as trays for crafting, for working with Play-Doh, for painting, all sorts of things. So you already saw me clean out and organize one of these bins. I've been working on cleaning out all of them little by little. So I'm going to take you through and show you how I've organized things. But I also want to label them because especially my six-year-old, but really both of my girls are constantly asking which bin has this, which bin has that? And they tend to want to open them up and dig through them to find what they're looking for. So it's definitely time to have some labels. And I'm not fancy, I don't have a label maker. I am literally just using 
some store-bought labels. I have some larger ones and some smaller ones. I know that these are not intended to go on plastic bins. Um, they're really for like paper or binders. So they might not be as durable as organization labels and they might be more difficult to remove should I decide to remove them later. But I don't care because I don't want to buy anything new. I know eventually I probably will want a label maker, but I've lived and homeschooled this long without one. So we're going to try to work with what we have. My plan is to use the larger labels for bins that have more things in them where I can actually list out each and every item in the bin. And then for bins that just maybe have one or two items, using the smaller labels. So let's see how this goes. My oldest is here to help me. These bins are really her babies. She's the artist of the family and she's in and out of these all the time, every day. What I'm gonna have her do is pull these out one by one and then together we're gonna look at the contents and make our labels. And I do apologize about the lighting and the shadows. We are filming this in the evening. We're just doing what we gotta do. So this first bin is our paint supplies. We have watercolor palettes and plastic paint palettes and our acrylic paints, um, acrylic paint pens, Mod Podge. That's basically what's in there. We don't need to move anything around or change it. I just cleaned these out and made sure that only good paint is in there. So we're gonna use one of the small labels and Eleanor is going to write paints. Yeah, just put it on the side right here so that as soon as you pull it out, you can see it. Okay, so the next bin underneath that one. This is actually all of our science experiment supplies from Bookshark Science. So let's go ahead and put all that back and we will just label it science. in this one okay this one is actually the one that I filmed cleaning out and organizing so I will write out a list on these longer labels okay so I have our list ready my helper is gonna put that on for me right on the side here Okay, let's check out the bin underneath. Definitely done some painting on this tray. So this bin has some more um, craft materials. I have some canvases in here with just black line art that can be colored or filled in. And then down here we have some smaller canvases. Some of these have been loved already, but they're still good to be reused or repainted. More small canvases. And then down at the bottom, we have a craft kit with some glitter paint and some special decorative paper and stickers. These are also really small canvases. So it's mostly canvases. And then over here, these are um, bookmark sleeves that I purchased in bulk on Amazon. They come with these colorful tassels to connect to them. My girls occasionally like to use these to make some DIY bookmarks either for themselves or they can give them away as gifts. This is my daughter's sewing kit. She just has like her fabric markers and all her sewing supplies in here. Fabric swatches. And then this is more sewing supplies. So both of these boxes are basically all sewing, um, some loom weaving supplies, some embroidery supplies. That's what all of this is. So let's just label those accordingly. So 
Okay, in these boxes, I think they're both Play-Doh stuff. Yeah. Play-Doh, we love our Play-Doh around here. Yeah, both Play-Doh. Both Play-Doh, that's easy. didn't really need more evidence, but this proves definitively that my nine-year-old has better handwriting than me. Those actually look like a font that you would choose to print in. Babe. Really? They're so good. Okay, we're down to the last two. And I think I remember these are both magnetic tiles, aren't they? So these are all of our magnetic tiles that are already organized in rainbow order because my kids do that all on their own. And then down here is more magnetic tile stuff. This is for our marble run. Okay, they are all labeled, and now they just have to pull them out a teeny bit to be able to see what's inside. I didn't want to put the labels in the front because I didn't think that they would look all that aesthetically pleasing, especially since we were just writing them ourselves. So I think this turned out really good. All right, y'all. Thanks so much for joining us. Don't forget to check out the playlist if you want to see more videos like this. We'll see you in the next one. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.